Hey everybody, welcome back to DJ Tutorials. This is going to be a really awesome course that basically takes you through the entire process on how to create this animation that you're seeing right in front of you here. We are going to basically be looking at how I take a scene or a project from beginning to end when working with a client and I take the request or the ask and create the final animation. And we're gonna be covering everything here. We're gonna be covering lighting, we're gonna be covering textures, we're gonna be covering materials prefabs, some modeling, all sorts of things to get you this really cool animation here. I'm not sure how long it's gonna be. This is just the first video, so we'll see where we go and how long this is gonna be as we work through this, but hopefully you will be here along with me for the ride. Now, this video is gonna be covering some very specific things. We're gonna need some prep work in order for us to start. So basically the prompt here was that I needed to create a animation that would be sort of like an intro video for people to watch before they start an interactive where they select some course material for a college set of courses. And since that map was kind of more like a very specific location GPS image that I don't think would have been very fun for all of you. I decided to make it something a little bit more fun and have it themed around this sort of like 1800s-esque look to it. So it's kind of like Victorian. There's some really fun stuff going on here. So I thought this would be more fun. Now, this is available to you if you'd like to just download the project file on Gumroad. So I'm gonna have that link down below and you could like pick it apart and take a look at it if you'd like and try and figure out how I did everything. But this series will basically cover everything that you'll need to know on how to create this. So you don't really need to do that. So let's get started by basically putting together all of the assets that we need in order to make this work. A really great place to start that I have found for prefabs, textures, materials, and HDRIs is Polyhaven. And it's always important that when you're working on a project like this, that you save as much time as possible. You really want to just work on getting the project done, making it look great, and moving on to the next thing. You don't really have the time when you're working in a professional capacity to create every single thing from scratch. It will take way too long. Now, a lot of people use things like Turbo Squid and things like that to download 3D assets. You can pay for 3D assets and stuff that will save you a ton of time. But since I wanna make this accessible to everybody, there's really great sites like this right here, which is called Polyhaven. And it used to be called HDRI Haven, which also had textures and models, so they changed the name. So you can see here we have HDRIs, textures, and models. So what I did here is I basically went and I grabbed an HDRI that I think would match sort of like a more of a finer establishment in the 1800s, which I thought a theater, Theaters are really like the velvet and everything that's in it. I thought that a theater would be really, really cool. So if you go in here and you do a search for something like theater, I use this one right here, theater two. So you can download that HDRI. The next thing that we're gonna need is a wood flooring and you could go with a carpet or something else if you'd like. I just thought it would be fun to have a wood flooring here. So I downloaded this one right here and I downloaded the 4K version. If you do end up having some trouble with the size of these textures here, you can always download the 2K, which will be uh, still a decent quality for the final render. It just won't use up as much of your GPU or computer space. So of course, the really important thing that you wanna do is get some prefabricated models so you don't really have to spend a whole lot of time creating those. Some people already did that, and if you could throw them some money, either purchasing it online or if they have it for free based on donations or something like that through a Gumroad, or by donating to Polyhaven, please support that. But if we go down the list here, you can see that I used this one right here. So I got Wooden Crate. Thank you, artist there. I'm gonna leave the name up for a second. We have this one right here that I use. So this brass vase. I also grabbed this table right here, this pocket watch that you can see right here, this lantern, this green chair right here, and this fancy picture frame right here. So I grabbed all of those and what you'll do is you'll need to, once you've downloaded those, you'll have to unzip them and put them in a location. And I'll show you how to do that momentarily, but you know, just get your download started now. Next thing that we really need to do is we need to find some available 2D images so that we don't have to recreate what's already been done here. And one of the things that I wanted was an older map, something that looks really, really cool with some really neat sort of like drawings and stuff like it to just sort of like reek of old age, uh, kind of like a treasure map or something. So. If you do some searches in Google and you look under images, let me just show you how you can do this. If you look for, let's say, 1800s map, just as an example, you can change it. If you go to the images here, you can change this under tools, usage rights, 
Creative Commons license. And from there, you can usually find some of these images that give you the freedom to use these for any means, whether you can see right here, there's the image that I use right here. It says um, accurate map of the world drawn in whenever commons wikimedia.org. So basically it says, hey, this is available for you to use and just make sure that you check the copyright. But you can use this method to find all kinds of really great textures and images and even some materials or 3D elements depending on how well you search. So that's how I came upon this map right here, which I think is really great. I wanted something that looks really old and ancient, so that's what I am using it as. And you can see that down here, there's the permission information, so you can see what the copyright information is for you to use this, and you can download it right here. Now, there is gonna be some uh, problems when you download it, and I'm gonna tell you how, like, where we're gonna put everything and how we're gonna structure this and everything like that. All the, all the boring stuff is all gonna be covered, so uh, just keep that in mind, we will be covering that. So just be aware. And you don't have to worry about looking for these. I have these all linked down below in the video description. So don't worry about having to search for all of these. Just go down into the video description and you can just click on the links there to download these images. The next thing that we need is a flame to go inside of our lantern. So that's what this one's gonna be used for right here. And we're going to basically pull this flame out and repurpose that in our scene. And you can see down here, here's all the copyright information here. And let's then jump over to this right here. So this one is the wallpaper pattern that is on the background. And we're gonna be taking this and we're gonna be making a seamless texture from this using GIMP. And then we're going to recolor this inside of the program to make it look like a really neat 1800s or Victorian-esque period wallpaper. The next thing that you're gonna need here is GIMP. And normally I would suggest that you can use Photoshop just the same, but in this situation, there is something very specific in GIMP that we're gonna be using to make our seamless texture and it's gonna make it really easy for us. So it's free, you can use it on Mac OS and Microsoft Windows. So just get it, download it. There's really no reason not to be able to get this, you know, clear off some space on your computer. It's a really light program and it works really well. So go ahead and download this and install it. Okay, so let's take a minute and start talking about your project files. So a lot of people just kind of skip this and they really don't understand why this is important. But when you really start working in a professional capacity, whether it's in a studio or at home, you really need to be able to organize your files in a way that makes sense so that if you come back to it years later or something like that, you know where everything is. And we want to be very organized and very detailed on how we do some of this stuff. And I'm going to just kind of talk about some of the basics and show you how to create this project file system that is going to work really well for almost any project that you do. So what we need to do is have sort of like a base folder that everything's gonna be in, that's fairly obvious. And the next thing that we need to do is, what I like to do is make a PRJ folder. And what that means is that our project files are going to go in there, so Blender, or a GIMP file or something like that, those are gonna kinda be placed inside of here if that's what your main project is. So for me, Blender's gonna go in here or if I have some other major sort of like project files, if I was doing something in a big compositing program and I wanted to just sort of save that in the same area, this is where I would probably put it. Now, if I did have something like a DaVinci Resolve one in here, uh, or a Blender file or a whole bunch of other stuff like GIMP, I would make individual folders for all of that. But I'm not gonna do that for this one because it's not gonna be as complicated as that. The next thing that we need to do here is we need to make an assets folder. So make an assets folder and not just a regular assets folder and we just throw everything in there. We have 2D and 3D assets. So we have 2D assets and we have 3D assets that we're going to need to place in here. Now, of course, you could be pulling from a library on your current computer and just sort of like link to those files from there. I'm showing you how to do this kind of like from scratch and how to organize this. So if you were going to copy this to something like a server or a backup file or something like that, you kind of want to save this stuff in this way just to make sure everything is nice and organized even if there's a duplication there. So let's first go into the 3D and we kind of need to just unzip a whole bunch of stuff here and place it into these folders. You can see that we have some assets here. It says fancy picture frame to 4K. So if I take this, copy that, name and I put it here and then I copy this 
and then I right click here, extract, and then I paste the location here for the folder. And then it says here, extract. I don't really want to show the files when complete, but if I extract that, you can see that now I have all the textures have been placed inside this folder. And I have a Blender file here that we're going to be using to kind of like append these 3D assets into our scene. So you're gonna to wanna to do that for all of your 3D assets from this point. So follow that same procedure for all of your 3D assets and come back to me when you are ready. So you can see here, I have all of my 3D assets have been extracted and placed into this folder. I have an extra brass vase here, so you probably just have one. One of these I didn't end up using, but I just extracted all of them into this location anyway, just in case I might've wanted it. The next thing that we need to do is we need to go into this 2D area here, and you're gonna place all of the images that you have downloaded go ahead and throw them right into this folder here. So you can see here that I have my HDRI right here and I have the other images that we collected. And you can see how crazy these uh, names are. So we're gonna be doing something here to help out with that. But you can see here I have my HDRI and I have these other images. So the material that we have here, this wood cabinet long, basically the flooring that we're gonna use, you're gonna kinda wanna do the same thing here. So we're gonna make a new folder. We're gonna take the wood cabinet name we're going to rename this folder, go inside there, copy this location, extract, paste that in there, and boom, there we go. There's all of our textures that we're going to need. Now again, you might have a location where you have all your materials that you download and stuff like that. That's definitely something that you want to do. I'm just showing everybody how you can do this just like starting brand new if you've never done file management before. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to do everything exactly like I'm doing, but it does help to understand at least the process that I'm doing here. Now, there are some issues that we're going to run into, but I'm going to first put these into some different folders because we're actually going to adjust some of these elements. So the first folder I'm going to make is called Flame. And we're going to take the candle burning. We're going to put that right in there. We're gonna make one called wallpaper because this is gonna end up being the wallpaper. We're gonna take this right here. This is the wallpaper image that looks like this, or at least the textile here. I'm gonna put that right in there. And we're gonna make another one called map. Now, sometimes what happens is a naming convention that is used off the internet might really mess things up. So I'm gonna actually duplicate this and I'm just gonna rename this 1800s map for now and put an underscore there. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the wallpaper because there's some weird stuff at the end here and sometimes that can automatically make other programs think it's something else. So we're going to copy and paste this and I'm just gonna call this one wallpaper original, something like that, just to make it easy. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna call this HDRI and we're gonna throw that HDRI image right in there. So now very, very simply, if we're ever looking for any assets for our project, it's super organized, go into 2D, we can go in here and grab some stuff, go into our 3D, go and grab some stuff, really, really, really simple. Before we start doing anything else, what I wanna do is create a render folder as well. So if we create this folder here called render, whenever we create any renders, they're gonna go right in here. And you can have sort of like different folders for different things as we work through the project, but make sure that you create that file to begin with so you don't just start throwing things into here willy-nilly and start having to move things around and all that. So there's that folder right there. And that's going to be it for this first tutorial. I know that we didn't really cover anything that is probably super exciting or anything that you really wanna to do to get your hands on the 3D elements or whatever. Don't worry, we're gonna be doing that. So just stay tuned, make sure that you're subscribed. Thanks so much to everybody for watching. Thank you to all my members and to the Patreon community. You guys are awesome. Throw me a like and a subscribe if you like what you're seeing here and I will see you all next time on DJ Tutorials.